Welcome to the School of Wedding Photography. I'm here with Christy Odom, a well-known wildlife and wedding photographer based in Washington, D.C. Christy has won over 60 international awards. She is a Nikon ambassador and has spoken on stage for Nikon, WPPI and Fearless. Her work has appeared in the Smithsonian Museum, in Rolling Stone magazine, Rangefinder, Junebug, and even on a billboard in Times Square. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us here. <laughs> oh, thank you for doing this. I, I'm honored and excited. <laughs> good. So you're heading to Poland tomorrow, is that right? Yes. <laughs> and, and is that for work? Not really. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, in a way it is. So um, when I got the, the Nikon ambassadorship earlier this year, I decided I wanted to make myself the strongest photographer I could. So I enrolled in more classes. Uh, okay. So I'm going to Poland to be part of the Seven Workshop, which this is my second session with them. And it's a seven-month um, program where I work with a mentor on developing my own personal work. So that way I can – ooh, where did that go? Um, sorry, my mother's calling. I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit that bit out that you're ignoring her. <laughs> no worries. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm – Let's see. There we go. Um, I'm going off to Poland to do my uh, my second set of classes out there, and I'm really excited to to see if I can learn more about the the documentary photography world to see if I can make more change and uh, use my camera to um, work to inspire and to to work to do more conservation projects. So I'm putting okay. my student hat on because I think we can always learn and always grow. And yeah. I was really excited when I got the Nikon ambassadorship and I was like, now how can I make myself stronger? How can yeah. I make my photography skills better so that I can really take advantage of that? And, uh, yeah, I've been looking for an opportunity like this. So I'm going to school tomorrow in yeah, Poland. Nice. nice. <laughs> um, and so seven is that, that's an agency, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And how did you get involved with them? Um, you know, honestly, it was the talent of the photographers that they have. Um, I've always wanted to learn from some of uh, some of the best documentary photographers in the world. And the first two instructors that we had just a couple of months, months ago were Ed Kashi, who's one of Nat Geo's um, photographers that does amazingly beautiful work, and Maggie Sieber, who um, she had the cover, I think it was either, it was the month before last on... Uh, the woman that had a face transplant. Oh, yeah. uh, it was an yeah. absolutely beautiful story. So I was really drawn to those guys as talented leaders in our industry. And I really wanted to learn more about, um, you know, photojournalism and using documentary work to um, have a bigger narrative and a bigger impact on the world. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, jumping back, how did you get into photography? Oh, goodness. Uh, I got into photography ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So growing up, I was really close with my grandfather, and um, I was also like, really into mathematics and really into engineering. And uh, I remember when I, uh, right before I went to university, my grandfather, he, he passed. And when he passed away, he left me all his camera gear. And I thought it was very strange because I wasn't a photographer. I wasn't really interested in photography, but um, I was really close to him, and it was special to him. So it became very special to me. I went to a university to study electrical engineering, <laughs> hmm. wanted to be an engineer, wanted to do something that would make me a lot of money, and, uh, you know, was, I, I went into photovoltaic engineering, and I, I um, during that time, it was the camera that kind of started opening different doors for me. Uh, I, I started, I, I was a big, shy, introverted kid, I've always been really nervous, and all of a sudden I had this uh, camera I could hide behind, and I could be the, the center of parties, I could be at the field of football games. Um, I started calling uh, different uh, venues saying, hey, this band's coming. Can I go photograph you guys for our student newspaper? And I started getting passes to photograph bands and musicians. And I just remember being, uh, you know, being shy and introverted, but all of a sudden having a tool to show these, these high moments and these things that I love and also having a tool to hide behind uh, in my social awkwardness. Yeah. Yeah. And the photography started really taking over more and more. I photographed Bono on like day before my 21st birthday oh, wow. <laughs> and I just remember thinking like if photography's taken me here imagine where I can go with it <clears throat> and that was kind of the day I, I left electrical engineering I moved to Australia <laughs> and okay. I got a degree in fine arts with a concentration in photo media um, yep. and, and that kind of led the path for me to continue doing photography. 
Right, right, okay. <laughs> very strange story, very like... Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I think it's probably, I hear that, I hear it a lot. I think people use cameras kind of as a reason to be present in something. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, it's, I don't think it's strange at all. Um, but what I find interesting, why did you come to Australia? What was, what led you here? <laughs> It was really strange. I'd actually, when I was doing my engineering degree, I did a, a little bit of a study abroad program in Sydney. So I was already familiar with the university and people there. Um, so I transferred from, you know, the study abroad. I went back to Georgia Tech for a semester and then that's where I, and then I ended up transferring as an international student. And I had already had friends. I had already had credit. And I absolutely loved the people and the wildlife. And, you know, I, I love the relaxed culture and um, you know, I, I was really drawn to Australia. I was really drawn to how, how people are very connected to, to the land and wildlife and yeah. conservation. And, um, it's an absolutely beautiful country. And yeah, yeah I, I may have tried to move there once before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, was Australian wildlife what got you interested in shooting it? You know, I think being uh, so shy and introverted, I kind of always found a place in the woods and, and in nature where that was kind of where I recharged my batteries and where yeah. I felt something bigger than myself. Yeah. Um, you know, I love being just overwhelmed by the size of a tree or seeing the emotion in an animal. I, it, it makes me see a bigger picture. Yeah. And for me, it's kind of an escape of, of all the crazy stuff that always goes on in the world. Like it's like this, uh, this moment when everything disappears and you just see this pure second of beauty. Mm. And I, I tend to see that more and more in nature. Um, so yeah, I mean, nature's kind of my escapism and it's, it's the place where I really, uh, really, I really feel big because I feel so small. Um, mm. it's become just kind of a, yeah. So I know that's a little bit abstract, but yeah, I've no. always liked being it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so what led you into weddings? So when I left Australia, it was really strange. Like this was back in 2004. And uh, <laughs> the single trip back to the U.S. Uh, was really expensive. Like the one-way flight was expensive. And all these travel agencies were advertising these brand new round the world fairs. The round world world fairs were four hundred dollars more than the single trip. I'm going like ah, I've just graduated university, like I yeah. sold my car, and I decided to do one of those trips around the world. Um, being an international student in Australia, I had a lot of international friends, and they opened up their houses and they let me stay in their places. I think I slept on 14 different couches that year. Uh, but I kind of just got up and I, I got my first credit cards, and I traveled around the world and I charged these credit cards up, and I um, I traveled for one year. Uh, when I got back home, when I ended up getting back to Atlanta, which is where I'm originally from. Uh, I had this exhibit, Georgia Tech, and my old engineering school actually asked me to come in and show some of my work. I was, I was ecstatic because I left after three years. I didn't graduate. Yeah. But they had this show for me. It was called Six Continents, A Girl on a Camera. And I showed these images, and I started talking about my adventures traveling alone around the world and encouraging people to travel. And through that exhibit, this girl asked me to photograph her wedding. I'm like, yeah, I'll photograph your wedding. Sure, I'll go do that. That'll be great. <laughs> I was shooting film back then, and I had made all these prints uh, of her wedding day, and I called her over to my house. And I was like, and I, I gave her my prints. Like, she sat down at my living room table, and I gave her my prints. And I was like, here are the photos from your wedding. And she picked up the image, like the first image, and she just she started tearing up, and she started crying. And I'm like, oh, my God, did I do something wrong? Yeah. Uh, but then she, she just went, oh, wow, I didn't think I could feel these feelings again. You know, mm. and, and the images, they got her choked up because she felt those moments from her wedding day again. I've never been a wedding person, but all of a sudden I realized I could use my art and, and give something, give these moments to people that they could have and they could cherish forever. And through my background of, of photographing the, the concerts and the, you know, the sports and the nature images, I had never had such an emotional response. And, and that's mm. when I was kind of hooked. And I was like, you know, I can do something that people are going to love. And I like doing things that people love. So that was what, I was uh, 500 weddings ago, <laughs> years yeah. ago, and yeah. now I'm like, <laughs> uh, and I'm still addicted to the, you know, the emotion that. And does that, that yeah, does that emotion like, still keep you going? Is that sort of the thing that? It does. It does. It's, weddings, it's yeah. nice, like, yeah. Some of my clients have multiple kids now. You go to their house and you see their wedding images up, and 
you know, and, and, and it's nice to be able to give something and give them these heirlooms that they pass on for generations that tell yeah. their stories and their love stories to their children. And yeah. so it's a, it's, it's a gift to be able to be a wedding photographer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, years ago I was shooting some commercial stuff with another photographer and I was sort of, um, moaning about an upcoming wedding that I was like one of the first ones I was doing. And he just turned to me and he said, listen, mate, the, the commercial stuff we're doing will be in the bin in about six months and the the weddings you do will be on your those people's grandchildren's wall that is yeah. that's the stuff you need to focus on put your energy in oh yeah okay <laughs> um so yeah yeah it's that's interesting i i think um i'm always interested why people keep doing weddings um uh, and i think it usually comes down to a reason something like that not just the money you know for the people that are not in it just for money. Yeah. <laughs> um, for sure. Now, I want to quote something you, you've quoted, um, which is uh, in terms of nature. You said Aristotle, it's a quote from him, all things of nature, there's something of the marvelous. Um, and I'm wondering how that sort of, how that influences what you do when, with your wedding, uh, with your nature work. For sure, for sure. I feel like, um, like I was saying, that like uh, nature's when I, I I kind of see these this life and these world puzzles and, and you know Fibonacci sequence repeated and just these things I don't understand and it, it it makes me see how big the world is and I feel that like that quote has been something that's been driving my work ever since the beginning. Um, you turn on the news and the TV and there's like such harsh information all the time like. You know, we've got a lot of shootings over here. We've got a lot of death over here. Like, you know, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And for me, that like peace and that uh, that marvelous is is kind of when I when I look at an orangutan mother holding her baby and showing the emotion. When I when I look at the way leaves grow, when I when I look at an insect playing peekaboo with me, like there's just so much to marvel at everywhere in this world. It's it's just simply beautiful. And I feel like um, as the world gets kind of harsher and harsher and the news gets harsher and harsher, it's, it's, it's my escape and it's my, my peace. Mm. Yeah, okay, okay. Do you find, I mean, do you find the same sort of um, beauty and sort of um, miracles? I, I'm not saying this as a joke. I mean, it's a serious question. Do you, do you find the same sort of thing in weddings? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Next question. No, Next question. Kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, oh goodness, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Like weddings have, um, well, they've got, they've got a lot of factors, uh, and it is beautiful those weddings where everything disappears and you just see the love between the couple, and it does happen. Mm. I wish it happened more, though. Mm. I really do wish it happened more. Um, I feel like there's so many um, logistics of making everybody happy and there's so many, uh, you know, family dynamics that uh, and, 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 and the industry's gotten to a place where there's a lot of expectations, you know, like a lot of people, um, you know, I, I always think it's funny when somebody hands me an invitation to photograph. I'm like, dude, that's already two dimensional. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need your invitation photographed. But it's just one of those things that's like, you know, that's not the moment. That's not the emotion. And that's not what's important. Uh, I feel like, um, you know, the wedding industry has become something that's been out there. And it's so visible now that people have uh, very different expectations of, of, of what it is now and what they're looking for and what the images need to be versus um, I just wish it could get back to, you know, hey, just photograph the raw emotions of the day. Mm. Sometimes you get those couples, but it's maybe one tenth of the couples, <laughs> you know, like it's not yeah. as many as I would like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you, I mean, how do you, um, how Sorry, do you try and find those couples? Bullshit. How do you try and find more people that are on the same page as you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a numbers game, is it? Sorry. You're, you're talking to me at the very end of a very long fall season. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Our season here, like October, November, is is crazy. So we're and we're also at that rush that everyone wants their photos before the holidays. So yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I, I I love my industry. I love photography. I love weddings. But you were talking to me at the most jaded time of the okay. year. 
<laughs> All right. right. <laughs> I have nothing but blunt and honest here. Yeah, so well, no, that's great. That's great. great. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so, I mean, do you, so I guess which way, what I'm wondering is, do you, do you keep pushing to get what you want? So doing more of the emotional stuff or do you sort of just go with the giving them what they're expecting? Um, I think I now, um, people do hire me for the emotional work. People do hire me for the moment work, which is fantastic. Um, a lot of times my couples are fantastic, but the, the families have different expectations and you're trying to please a lot of people with wedding imagery. So, um, there's a little bit of a, you know, let's try to find a time to get all those images your mom wants and, and then let's have the rest of the day be the emotional stuff. So a lot of it is, uh, yeah. getting to know your clients and sitting down with them beforehand and kind of setting those expectations out. Like, do you, do you want me to do those images that make you feel, um, or would you like me to spend an hour on detail shots? You know, so there's, there's, you know, um, kind of a different expectation. Just, I think a lot of it is, is how you approach the client, how you work with them throughout the day and how you kind of sit down with them beforehand and go through expectations, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> God, I sound so negative, don't I? <laughs> no, it's, it's entirely practical. I mean, it's, this is the stuff that has to be done if you want to have a business that keeps being a business. Um, okay. Um, now storytelling, uh, is this, I, you've spoken about this, I think, uh, and I'm wondering if you can sort of recap that, <laughs> the, your approach to storytelling in both nature and uh, weddings. Okay, no worries. Uh, a lot of times when I, when I see something, I try to think of, of what could make the best story there. Um, I know that like, you know, about seven years ago is when I decided to start taking the efficient spot because <laughs> I started seeing like the efficient has the best spot to show the audience and the reaction and show this multi-level to the story. Uh, and I feel like those things are the things that kind of add that extra level. You know, when my clients come up to me and they say things like, let's go outside and do a night lit shot to end the album. And I'm going, you know, let's, let's get your DJ or band to say, Hey, let's crowd around the couple. And give them a last dance to remember. And those shots, when you're surrounded by those people that you love, that's the story. Like going outside with artificial lights at the end of the night, when everyone's excited and wanting to say goodbye, I feel like that detracts from the story. So I try to, you know, really get down to what's important to my couples. It's the fact that you're surrounded by all these people you love to celebrate the love of your life. And that's a beautiful thing. So how can we put that more into the story? How can we put the people that are there that love you more into the story? So a lot of it is just, um, you know, really just thinking about what's going on and what's important to people and trying to, to build a bigger narrative with, with the wedding day. Um, the same thing with, with nature, you know, how the animals interact, how do you see their emotion? How do they, what are their gestures like? What are the, the ways that they touch each other? How do they interact with their environment? You know, trying to, to build a narrative. I do a lot of um, workshops where I take people in different parts of the world and, and journaling is a big part of my workshops to, you know, hey, what is the narrative you're trying to portray? So, you know, write your narrative and then let's take photos that kind of circle around that narrative and how can we build what you're trying to say in an image? And a lot of that is by, you know, different uses of the background and different uses of the multi-level photojournalism and, and, and how do you kind of bring people to the point in the narrative you're trying to trying to say with an image yeah okay okay is that kind of what you were asking yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no it? definitely um and <laughs> uh i mean do you always feel like you get it no no okay good <laughs> <laughs> but i get really excited when i do and yeah. i'm always trying and that's <laughs> yeah. the key moment my gosh i think the only reason that i've had little bits of success is because i i actually enjoy failure yeah. I collect failure letters. I collect rejection letters. Like I'm knocking on Nat Geo's door almost every other month right now. And they are rejecting me and I'm getting a stack of their rejection letters. And I love it. And that's one of the reasons like one day I will find the crack. I will find yeah. that crack and yeah. I will get through. Get through. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, I seriously think the successful people in this world are the ones that are totally fine. Like knocking on the door after they get failure letters. Yeah. And I've had a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I read some, I think it was a meme I saw yesterday. It said, no kid um, trying to walk stumbles 50 times and thinks, this isn't for me. I'm giving up. You know, they just keep 
trying and they eventually get it. And it's, it's the same thing, you know. <laughs> it's good that they're so like padded when they're young. So yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, I wish we could be slightly more padded emotionally. But <laughs> yes, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. <laughs> Um, do you find shooting sort of wildlife helps shooting weddings and vice versa? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed through weddings is that people want to connect emotionally. They want to feel when they see an image, they want to, they want to see the emotion. They want to see the expression and, and what makes a powerful image is when you can get somebody to, to feel. So I started thinking, well, what can I do for conservation? Uh, what can I do for animals? Like when I see animals in the wild, I feel this emotion and I feel this connection to them. And I want to show that connection back by showing animals as emotional beings. Um, primates are highly emotional, different monkeys. You know, primates are 97% of their de- non-human primates, 97 to 98%, 96 to 98% of their DNA with us. Uh, and so with that, like you, you, you see this, you see a love, you see an affection. So I started to try to, to look for emotion in animals. Uh, but how do you show emotion when there's no tears and there's no laughter? Mm. Uh, so I've started really studying body language. Like you can see it in shoulders, you can see it in ears, you can see it in gesture, you can see it in touch. So there's this body language to, to photograph wildlife that's, that's different. But it translates because it's the same body. I mean, like how much of what we communicate is in our own body language. You can tell if somebody's tired or happy and hyper. Like you can tell if somebody's not interested in what you're saying just right off the bat. Like there's so much of our communication in our own body language. Uh, So by understanding that, I've been able to photograph animals, uh, you know, emotionally in a different way. And with that, it's funny because it's gone back to weddings. Uh, so now it's, it's, I see emotion. Animals have taught me to see emotion differently. And with that, I've started photographing people and, and their emotion more and their, and their body language and, and in their mood and in their shoulders and in their, the confidence of their stance or the insecurities of their stance. So there's this, this beautiful understanding of body language that's come from photographing mm. animals um, for emotion. And so I feel that like, my my voice is really developed in a, a, a in a different way by um, these these intimate encounters with nature uh, that's translated to show a very different style of shooting with people. Yeah, I think okay. personal projects and anything that you kind of do to work to to discover. I mean, weddings are when I tell somebody else's story. Nature is when I really tell my own. And I think through telling your own story, a lot of times is when we really discover our own voice and we discover why we're shooting and what we love. And uh, the more I've photographed wildlife, the more my own voice has kind of come out and and the more I see what's important. And I think it's paved the way for a very specific style of of shooting weddings. Mm. So it's given me an edge. It's given me my difference. And it's, um, you know, helped me with voice development. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, in, in, t- in terms of, uh, having a point of difference, uh, I think there's, there's a sort of received wisdom in the wedding industry that you should only show weddings on your website. Um, and you obviously don't, you show, you have two distinct parts of your site. Um, and I'm wondering, do you feel like that's, it's helped or hindered you in any way, sort of having both of those on you know, it's funny because this is, I, I've always talked about like my wedding clients, um, you know, I, I attract wedding clients that are very much into conservation and, and they love that I'm doing things to kind of try to share my own narrative with the world. So in the wedding industry, I think it's helped. Mm. Uh, but in the other industries and in the nature industry, I think it's, it's hurt me because there is a little bit of a stigmatism of, you know, people that shoot weddings for money and, you know, like it's not that you know, shooting weddings for money, it's like people, that's what people assume right off. Like, oh, well, she's done all this stuff with photography, but she's still shooting weddings. She must be doing it for money. And I'm like, no, I, I really genuinely love giving those moments back to people. And I, it's, it's become something that I see is beautiful of, of seeing these people have these amazing moments with each other and to be able to give that to them as a gift. Um, so even though I've always talked about keeping the sites together and things like that. I'm going to keep my nature stuff on my wedding site, but I'm going to make a separate nature site. Um, so that when those opportunities with the, the nature work come up that they don't see the weddings. Cause I think that while brides are a little bit 
brides get excited about that. Maybe some other fine art and commercial industries don't get excited about that. Mm-hmm. Is that so I'm finally splitting them. I haven't done it yet, but this is my project over the next couple of months. I've bought the domains and I'm going to have a nature site that has nothing to do with weddings, but my yeah. wedding site will always have nature images on them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and was that, is that sort of something someone said to you or have you sort of just sort of realized that needs to be done? Yourself? I've realized it needs to be done. I've realized that, um, yeah, I've realized that the, the nature guys, they, they don't want to see weddings on, on your website. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. which maybe that's an assumption. Um, and maybe it's something I'm trying out to open those doors a little bit more for myself. So I'll see how it goes. Like everything is, you know, trying to take steps forward and in, in one way or the other. And, um, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I know you've won a lot of awards over the years, um, in, I'm specifically sort of talking about weddings here. Um, and, um, I'm wondering how helpful do you think that's been for you in getting new clients and sort of growing your wedding business? The awards are something I do for my own personal self growth. Um, there's so many different competitions out there. Like I spent today judging, um, one of the WPPI competitions, um, or doing audio critiques of the WPPI competition, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but I find that competitions are a beautiful way to kind of learn how to perfect your imagery in different ways. And the different competitions, they all have different voices. They have different things they offer, you know, like the fearless competition really celebrates people that step outside the box and do mm-hmm. something original. Mm-hmm. Whereas the WPPI comps are really celebrating the craft of the Im- image, the craft of the print. And so whenever I work to enter WPPI, it's because I'm working on my own craftsmanship. I'm working to see how I can better perfect that image. Uh, when I enter fearless, it's because I want to see if I'm out of the box. Uh, so I feel like competitions for me have been a way of growth. Um, it's one of the biggest problems I see in the industry is people get to a certain level and they stop taking the steps forward. Mm-hmm. And I think it's always important to, to either find mentors, find workshops, find classes, inner competitions and not inner competitions to win, but inner in competitions for your own self growth, for your mm-hmm. own ability to kind of learn from people in that industry, learn from people and, and, and see what, what works and what doesn't and what makes you stand out. So, um, the competition world is always a, a, a world of my own growth and self discovery. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was interesting what you said at the beginning that you, you got the um, Nikon ambassadorship and the first thing you thought was right now, how can I keep growing? Um, I think a lot of people would think, Oh, now I've, I've arrived. I've, <laughs> I've achieved. <laughs> now I can relax. Um, so, I mean, do, are you constantly sort of learning and sort of pushing yourself and growing? I try to see what opportunities I have for growth. I, I, I one of the, the, Biggest things in the world to me has been um, just amazing photographers. Our industry is beautiful, and there's so many beautiful people that are willing to teach. There's beautiful people like you that are willing to put resources out there for people to learn with, and uh, I think that things like that are things that are constantly helping us take steps forward. I've had um, four or five people that have just been instrumental in in, uh, giving me knowledge, giving me honest feedback, working to to help me uh, get my image together, my images together, and my fine artwork uh, stronger. So I think that like finding those resources and finding ways to grow, I think you know like we can always always take a step forward, and we can always make ourselves our best self. And I feel like the problem is when people feel like they need to not learn anymore. And I think that those people are the ones that. You know, if, if, if this is where they're going to be, like, say they've started, you know, they've gotten this high and they don't believe they can learn from anybody else, they're going to stay there forever more and then everybody else is going to jump up above them. So I think that, um, I think learning is, is, is a key. I think it's a key to, to keeping yourself relevant and, and, and keeping your work strong. Mm-hmm. The industry is always growing. It's growing super fast. Oh my gosh, it's been changing so much recently. The whole mirrorless thing is changing everything which is is it's fantastic it's beautiful and i'm like getting so excited about all the new uh mirrorless cameras and i was like the one of the slowest people to embrace this change but i'm like whoa this is this is definitely a game changer so it's it's interesting to kind of see where things are going yeah where do you think they'll go (sighs) easier more accessible lighter like 
I mean, the ability to have these tiny cameras that shoot for 45 megapixel files, like in a purse, like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And like, I've just been so blown away. I started, started diving into the world of video, which I think is a whole new narrative. And the fact that I don't even have to buy new gear. It's like, I, yeah. I can just use my photography gear and all of a sudden shoot these little slow motion and crazy videos that I can put up on social media. Like it's been, um, you know, the, the industry and the mirrorless uh, like revolution is going to start, you know, jumping us into a totally different direction, which I think is, it's, it's really cool. Like the, the smaller, more compact and, but yet stronger these machines become like the more the ability we can, we can narrate on a daily basis as opposed to just bringing our cameras out on a special occasion. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, knowing what you know now as, as a wedding photographer, photographer, um, what advice would you give yourself if you were starting out in wedding photography? <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't even know. That's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I guess when the pressure is ever on, put your head down and really work on yourself and your art. Mm. Mm. I don't know, it sounds silly, but a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure to uh, meet the right people or be in the right networks and be in the right circles. But at the end of the day, we're artists and, and you know, realize the power of that tool, the power of the camera, the power that it has to make our voice speak so loud you know yeah. um, so yeah. I think that those are you know just to uh, to believe in the power of the camera and, and and to never forget that yeah yeah um in terms of being an artist or well yeah being a photographer is it what do you think have you had or what would be uh sort of a moment where you go okay that's it everything I've done has been worthwhile Oh, goodness. You know, it's really funny because I had something simple happen to me the other day that made me feel really good. Like it was um, just something small and simple, and it made me feel that for a brief second, which was really nice. Um, one of the current projects I'm working on right now is um, being able to see the beauty and the sublime in our own backyards and in our own neighborhoods. Uh, I've been working on a, a bug project, a bug and a local plant project. Uh, to kind of show, you know, uh, the, the craziness of, of how beautiful these insects are that are in our backyards. And I did a talk for Nikon about um, photographing the sublime just uh, at, at Photo Plus a couple months ago yeah. uh, in October. And I had somebody tag me on Instagram. Uh, and they tagged me and saying, like, you know, hey, I photographed these leaves in my backyard. Uh, I was inspired by Christie's talk at Photo Plus And... Uh, you know, she pushed to show the sublime and, and the beauty that we have uh, all around us. And so I went into my backyard and I photographed these fall leaves in the snow. And, you know, it, it made me feel good. It made me feel like, wow, my talk maybe made this, this person see a little bit of, of beauty that they may not have seen before. Mm -hmm. And a beauty that was accessible, a beauty that was in their own backyard. And it, it was a stunning image. And I was going wow, something that simple, if that message stays with her, if that message was seen in other people of like, you know, hey, this world is beautiful. Mm. Um, and for a moment, like I felt, I felt really good about that one Instagram tag. Like I remember I screen grabbed it and I, I was just like, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I may have helped her see something that she might not have seen before. And that makes me feel great. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess that feeling of helping people, um, do you get that when you're doing sort of workshops and talking? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I Oh my gosh, I'm such an introvert. Like when I first started getting asked to speak, it was like the scariest thing in the whole world for me. Uh, but then I started to see that, you know, oh, wow, this, this has the ability to help a person and make a person a little better and give them uh, more skills and, and, and more confidence and help them develop their own voice. And, and so I, I started to see, instead of seeing it as a fear of mine, I started seeing it as a, uh, you know, a, a gift that these people are giving me their time and maybe I could help them be better. 
Uh, and so I was really drawn to, to public speaking. I started, I've been going to public speaking classes for four years now just because I'm so anxious and I wanted to make myself the best public speaker I could. Yeah. So I go to weekly meetings <laughs> for four <laughs> <It's> years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like um, and uh, I also like the workshops have just been like, I, so when I started photography, there was a period where I was a travel agent for two years. So like one of my favorite things is trip building. And I tend to try to find these like really crazy adventurous trips and they're a lot of fun. And uh, so I, combining the two and giving people these like crazy nature experiences, like where we get to, to photograph bears and watch them feed and um, get them camping out in the wilderness. Uh, it, it's been so much fun. It's like they wake up and they feel that connection with nature and then help them figure out how to build a narrative to, to story tell and, and to see and discover their own voice. So it's, it's, we're hoping we're moving in that direction a bit more. So we're doing a lot more of these workshops and we're having so much fun with them and so much fun with, uh, it's really nice because like our next workshop, we're going to Kenya in January, like everybody, but one person from my last trip in Alaska, from our last trip in Alaska is going to Kenya. Oh, wow. <laughs> so there's a lot of repeat people. They're coming on all our yeah, workshops. Yeah, yeah. It's, just Great. Like, <laughs> it's so good. I'm so excited. So we have like a, we have a good thing going and I, I'm excited to kind of uh, help people develop their own photography skills and give them an adventure in nature and also like a, a story to remember. <laughs> Yeah. My trips are—they're they're not for the light at heart. They're our trips are—they're fun. They're kind of—they can go a little crazy, but they're—they're they're always safe. <laughs> they're always fun. <laughs> crazy, crazy, what way? <laughs> crazy, and uh, there'll be a story or two at the end of them for sure. But all like it's all, uh, yeah. Oh gosh, either I don't know. May it be multiple uh, tremors in the middle of the night from <laughs> earthquakes or. Uh, <laughs> bears walking down paths and following people it's always something but okay, there's cool. you know like yeah. it's uh it's it's been good <laughs> um how how do you define um success as a wedding photographer why that's so hard Sorry. <laughs> it's like <laughs> i honestly feel like success is something that you're constantly striving for but you never actually achieve like mm -hmm. i feel like it's that that desire, uh, you know, to keep growing and learning and taking steps forward. Um, I feel like you're successful when, um, when you make your clients happy, you know, if that's your goal to, and that's what your goal should be is to, to give these images to people that they're going to love. It's not about the competitions. It's not about, um, ambassadorships. It's about uh, success really lies and, 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 um, being the best photographer you can for your clients. Yeah. Yeah. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Kenya. <laughs> I, <laughs> the lions. I want to take photo photographers out and experience more. Um, looking forward. I, I got a lot of stuff looking. I'm looking forward. To, I've got a lot of public speaking gigs next year. So I've got my first almost a thousand person audience that I'm keynoting for. And I'm excited about that. Cool. Where's that? I get to speak to a lot of people in New England. It's a New England Camera Club Council. Okay. So they said expect 800 to a thousand people. They've never had a female keynote. All right. I'm the first. Good one. I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm excited to speak at CES next month um, or in January, Consumer Electronics Show. So yeah. there's a lot of um, a lot of things that I'm really looking forward to in uh, 2019. I think first and foremost is Kenya, though. Like I really just can't wait to get another group of workshoppers out and and get them to have the experience of a lifetime and also teach them to be better photographers. Yeah. How long is that trip? Uh. Hey, Darren, how long is Kenya? Is it 11 days? Nine days. Nine days. Okay, <laughs> nice. Hey, Darren. Hey, Darren. <laughs> He's happy. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, look. Um, Shops together, that's my better half. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I hope you know him because he's in your house. Um, <laughs> in his paint sleeping pants <laughs> yeah. well, listen Christy thank you so much for joining us um, if people want to find you online where can they get in touch christyodom.com okay. feel free to follow me on Facebook or Instagram um, you know all those good places I appreciate like you and 
you putting this out there and taking the time to interview me. I'm flattered. Um, oh, no, thank you for the time, your time. <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> Six times like to get in touch. I apologize for that. It's oh, no, busy, no, but... it's fine. It's fine. You've, you've not quite beaten my record of uh, reschedules. I, I, I'm, I was speaking <laughs> to someone tonight and I was meant to speak on Monday after about eight times rescheduling and the power went out in my place and I had to email and go, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we have to reschedule again. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm glad we could you know, finally connect and uh, thank you for your time. Of course, thank you so much. And uh, like, you know, thank you for raising the industry up and working to better photographers. It's a, it's a gift you're giving everyone and I appreciate you for it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, have fun in Poland. Thank you. Time to be a student. <laughs> Time to learn. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. bye.